Live from San Francisco, California, it's The Cube at VMworld 2014. Brought to you by VMware, Cisco, EMC, HP, and Nutanix. Now, here are your hosts, John Furrier and Dave Vellante. Okay, welcome back everyone here live in San Francisco, California. This is theCUBE, we are at VMworld 2014. It's our fifth year doing the show here, Silicon Angle's theCUBE with Wikibon analysts. I'm John Furrier, the founder of Silicon Angle, my co-host Dave Vellante, co-founder of Wikibon.org. And analyst Stu Miniman uh, on the ground, getting all the stories. Guys, we're kicking off day three, uh, day one, kind of a high level setting the stage, day two, um, getting under the hood, day three, fill in the blanks. Certainly we're going to hear a lot about um, you know, mobile, some ecosystem announcements, certainly the Sanjay Poonen show with the end user computing kind of hitting the stage here, kind of like put a bow on the show. This will be uh, you know, our last day here. Uh, guys, want to just jump right in. Uh, we've got a great lineup of guests. We've got Chris Wolf, CTO of VMware coming on. We have Bill Fathers, uh, big time guy here at VMware. We got Eric Nielsen who runs social for VMware. Frank Artali from Ignition Partners. Um, but Dave, last night was, I call VC night. It was VC <laughs> night last night. <laughs> All the VCs were out, so, you know, but what's missing, I don't see Sequoia Capital anywhere, they're like invisible, but we had, you know, certainly we saw Highland Capital, Lightspeed, Norwest is here, Greylock is here. Um, NEA. NEA today, XL Partners, uh, Ignition. Um, you know, they're out scouring the deals, and certainly from an opportunity standpoint, we're seeing a slew of great investment opportunities, but also breakout companies. So I want to get your take, Dave. Where is the opportunities from your standpoint? Obviously, hyperconverge is the buzzword, basically purpose-built infrastructure. You're seeing essentially software-defined data centers start to fill in. Startups, growing companies, what's your take? Well, I think that hyperconverge is a big theme here. You saw with the announcement of uh, Evo Rails, and uh, we saw DRAJ last night from Nutanix. They let the East Coast in on the Nutanix deal last night. Fidelity and Wellington came in for yeah. another 140 million, was just announced today. So, you know, I think that's, it's interesting. A lot of people say, you know, uh, you said it perfectly, John. Steve Harrod hit the shot right down the middle when asked about Evo Rails. And he said, well, you know, a lot of people are questioning, you know, the impact on existing players. And yet at the same time, it's validation. Is Evo <laughs> Rails off the rails or on uh, the rails? What's your take on well, that? Well, I think it's, you know, Gelsinger is clearly, as we had predicted when he took over, bringing hardware and software together. The slight playbook out of uh, Larry Ellison, but doing it with an ecosystem. So, it's I don't a, think it's, it's off classic, the rails. It's a I classic VMware move, right? VMware um, loves to lay out, hang out the architecture. Even going back to our original Cube 2010, Dave, Paul Maritz is the CEO, he laid out the original vision, which still is in play today, although it has taken shape in a different form. It is the stack, it is the full software stack, it is the cloud mainframe, if you want to call it that. And you're seeing all of it play out, almost to the T, as he laid it out on a high level. So, you know, VMware likes to hang that mannequin up on Nordstrom's with, it all hangs together, the jacket goes with the tie. Um, and I think Rails points to uh, the mega trend, and I think we'll see if that comes home or not, but ultimately it is the hyper-converged. You're seeing workloads and applications dominating the conversation now. And you, if you remember, Dave, at e EMC World, I think it was 2011, I asked Pat Gelsing, then the president of EMC, what leads the conversation, infrastructure or applications? The old days it was app infrastructure, dictates uh, what goes on in the application layer. Now we're seeing almost a reverse. And I don't know if you remember his answer, but it was Oh no, he said applications are the gate, really, is what he said. Yeah, and, and yeah. this is actually a perfect setup. If you look at what we're going to be covering on theCUBE today, the end user computing group uh, is one of the key use cases for vSAN and Evo Rail coming out of the gate. So uh, we, we've seen over the last year, Sanjay Poonin came in, he's built his team. Chris Wolf's going to be our first guest on there, talking about how they've really you know, transformed that end user computing group. It's not just a little VDI niche thing, but you know, the AirWatch acquisition, like, cloud volumes acquisition, uh, you know, lots going on in this space. Dude, so, so Stu, let's, let's take an election. Do we, call, do we call the winner yet? I mean, basically, the apps are dominating. I think it's safe to call, Dave, that that is, is the play. Um, with DevOps and cloud, and certainly the economic shift, when you look at Flash, and you know, some of the stuff going on under the hood, apps and workloads are now having that dynamic provisioning, dynamic standing up in, in, in seconds, minutes, hours, versus you know, the old days, you know, days and, and weeks to stand up infrastructure. So I think infrastructure as code is a theme we've heard before, and, and that's coming home. 
The, the other thing I want to get your perspective on, Dave, we teased this out yesterday, we're going to ask the guests here, certainly Chris, when he comes on, CTO of VMware. You know, Docker is interesting, right? Docker and OpenStack have, have certainly uh, been validated 100% in my mind, great move by VMware. But the world is, you know, if you look about operating systems and kind of the mainframe model of the cloud, there's really two types of applications, stateless applications and stateful applications. Both work well together, but stateless applications are really the, 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 the service oriented, the API economy, that's REST APIs, et cetera. That's great, that is kicking ass, taking names, I love the Docker play there, but in the enterprise, state, stateful applications also are a criteria. What's your take on that? And do you see VMware basically endorsing the open source ethos and then putting their positioning on those stateful applications? Well, a couple things. One is, yeah, I think that's a smart move by VMware saying, okay, we've got you know, the state applications covered. We got a, there's a big move around so-called stateless applications. Let's sort of embrace that and bring it into the fold. And where they, where, where they ultimately will need the sort of security and the robustness, we can bring that to the table. The second point is, you made this point yesterday when you go back to the mainframe world and co Ball, everybody was doing development internally because it, it drove differentiation. It was a, a source of competitive advantage. That went away largely with client server. Everything was outsourced to Anderson Consulting and, and Accenture and SSAP implementations and then off the shelf stuff, commercial off the shelf with the, the desktop. That's coming back. This whole citizen developer movement that you mentioned sort of yesterday is really back involved. It's a new source of competitive advantage. You throw in analytics and big data and Voila. Well, I mean, I think that the, the battle here is, that, is the developers. I just tweeted out, you know, to, to quote Steve Ballmer, who's you know former CEO of Microsoft, out, now out at Microsoft, developers, developers, developers. I would add that it's about apps, apps, and apps. And I think this notion of vertically integrated apps and workloads into infrastructure on demand is really the key. Um, but it's interesting shift, Dave, right? I mean, you, you're talking about, you know, VMware putting out the stake in the ground across the board from the lower end of the stack up to the high end of the stack. Um, do you think that that the developer market will evolve as an open, or will it be a hybrid mix between some closed architectures? No, oh, it's going to be open. I mean, I think open source is the big wild card here, and I think it's a blind spot in, in, for many companies, you know, like VMware, frankly. I mean, VMware's you know, sort of tip, putting their toe in the water of open source, I think. Um, you know, it's, it's parent, EMC, has never been known for open source. Pivotal, on the other hand, you know, that's yeah. their open source play. John, I'm actually a little surprised I haven't heard more DevOps, uh, you know, at the show here. You know, much much of the developer community in general. Um, you know, I, I expected to see it more. And one of the things uh, at the show I'm a, I'm a little worried about is that the VMware administrators were great at driving that revolution, starting to break down silos, embrace some of the change. And when I'm, I'm talking to some of the people in the community, they're like. Oh, that Docker thing, that scares me a little bit. I don't know, Pivotal and new applications, you know, no, I, I don't know, we're not comfortable with it, I'm not sure how to get trained on it. Um, it reminds me, you know, it's just that the people that helped drove this last revolution, I'm not sure that they're ready to look at another revolution. Stu, I want to pivot on that, because that's a really great point. So like Dave, we heard Carl Escherbach say that VMware is a data center automation company. And if you look at all the successes and the wealth creation and the major inflection points and tech trends, it's been the players like Intel and Microsoft and the big guys who have abstracted away complexity, right? So automation is a key part of that. One thing we haven't heard much at this show is orchestration. Is that the quiet battleground going on behind the scenes, Dave, the orchestration piece, Stu? What's your take on that? Because yeah, at the end of the day, orchestration is the control plane. Orchestration is, the, is a key part. Automation certainly has to be there. And Stu, you could talk this better than I can, but you guys are, you and Floyer are doing a study now, and that's sort of the next battleground beyond the whole, you know, the integration battle. Yeah. Now it's about orchestration. And, and let's face it, the server orchestration is looking good. Right. The other pieces, not so mature. Yeah, absolutely. So we have a report that went out at the beginning of the week on wikibon.org, really digging into the VMware ecosystem. We're actually going to do one of our scorecards uh, over the next couple of months. So you know, look for that research. And you've got the VMware ecosystem, you've got OpenStack, and of course VMware's you know, looking to embrace that. And we, we want to dig into that a little bit more. Um, Amazon and what's going on there. So lots of different ecosystems. And you know, orchestration is the next battleground. Absolutely. Right, so I got to ask you guys about Bill Fathers. He's coming on the queue. I want to ask you what you're going to ask. We didn't talk about vCloud Air much. Obviously the brand name, I love the, I love the name. Not to be confused with my MacBook Air um, sitting here on the table, but it's, just, it's a great branding. I, thought, I like the Air branding. I got to say, I do, it works for me. Um, it has a good feeling to it. But what do you think about overall, Stu, the vCloud and what Bill Fathers, and what are you going to ask Bill when he comes on? So, uh, you know, the real challenge I think is, you know, can they find a way for service providers to add value and make money? Because that, that's been the challenge. You know, VMware 
VMware, of course, you know, has such a huge presence in the you know, data centers and wants to be able to extend that. Um, they had an original pro program that was just partnering, and then they built their own cloud because it wasn't getting as much traction. So it's how much does VMware do themselves versus partner, and, and how can they grow that ecosystem? And I do see that rebranding as a, a renewed effort to really you know, push those various channels uh, and, and, and get their partners to help them. And you know me, John, I'm like a broken record on you know, marginal economics and volume and you know, can they be cost competitive? So that's, that's my line of questioning. Well, we are here live, day three, wall-to-wall -wall coverage. Go to our crowd chat. Uh, we're having a group uh, chat on this, crowdchat.net slash VMworld. It's our new uh, engagement container. Some are saying it's the docker of social media. Um, Dave, uh, we'll be on there all week. If you're watching, go to crowdchat.net slash VMworld. We're having a threaded conversation, fully recorded in our container. Stu, great analysis. Go, go out and get some data for us. And obviously, Dave, we're going to still drill into Nutronix. Big news today, $140 million in financing at a $2 billion valuation. Uh, DRaj uh, uh, says last night uh, that he's on a $200 million run rate. Um, that would put him at a 10X valuation on projected re run rate revenues. A little bit lower, I think he could have got more. Don't you? People, are, people, are, people are saying that, uh, the Merck says that they're, they're on track to become the next Oracle or the next VMware. Mm, I don't know, but okay. Certainly that <laughs> software stack model has proven out, certainly financially, it's not hype. It's, they got some meat on the bone, they got some revenues there. So a new world order is being shaped out here at VMworld, as usual, great conversations. We'll be right back with our next guest here, live in San Francisco, after this short break. <laughs>